cream. My poor little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. Why are WNBA players so worried about Caitlin Clark? Well, in my opinion, this is a great example of what Martin Luther King Jr. was talking about in his iconic I Have a Dream speech. Allow me to illustrate, because there's a problem brewing for Caitlin Clark. So much so that I'm going to ask you to say a prayer for Caitlin. I don't think she has any idea what's coming her way when she gets to the WNBA. The level of resentment towards her is going to be off the charts. Seriously, listen to this. Now, we do have the ability to watch in real time a transcendent talent in Kaylin Clark, but I will tell you this. A lot of people are saying, is she the most important person in college hoops or in hoops overall? I understand the arguments based off of what she has done for the game at, at it is, as it is currently, but I will say this. There are a lot of women like Asia Wilson, like we can say she's the future face, but right now, Asia Wilson is the current face. Two-time MVP. Asia Wilkins, don't know her, never heard of her. I bet you many of you people haven't heard of Asia Wilkins either. I think you have to be a huge fan of WNBA to even have any idea who this woman is or Asia Wilkins is. Two-time champ. And like, it's just interesting when you hear people say like, other people get shoes before her. Like there's still a lot of work that we have to do to make sure that what we're amplifying is the truth as it is authentically on the court. The truth? How does the truth and how do you amplify the truth to, to spit your needs? Because the truth is what people believe. The truth is what they see with their own eyes. They're not looking to WNBA players to basically manufacture the truth. But Caitlin, when she enters and if she's able to continue upon this hype and deliver it through her play, she will have a lot to say about the professional ranks in the state of women's basketball overall. I will not give one person the crown, or should I say the tiara on the women's <laughs> side? <laughs> yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're not going to give any one woman the crown, or as she liked to say, the tiara, to basically be that person in the WNBA. Funny. I didn't know she was responsible for delegating who gets the crown, rather, the tiara in the WNBA. That's got to be news to basically everybody outside of the WNBA that somebody can control who gets to wear the tiara. Okay. <laughs> right. But I, I do think that there's so many women that are doing great work. I always say what's hidden in the dark will come to light. People will see soon all of the, like through Caitlin Clark, we got to talk about Lynette Woodard, uh, Pearl Moore, Cheryl Miller, and so many others. That's the beauty of our game. It's not just one person. It's being able to make sure we shine a light on the true stories. You the true story that they're going to shine the light on is a, is about those players who came before Caitlin Clark. You need to know those players. Not so much about Caitlin Clark. You need to understand that this is much bigger than Caitlin Clark. And we're gonna make sure we let you know what the real story is, okay? Nailed it. A lot of people think it's just Iowa and the field. That's not true. South Carolina undefeated, only team men's or women's to go undefeated this year. You've got so many teams. The Pac-12 is super, you know, deep. You've got LSU knocking on the door. So there's so many great stories in the women's game. And I think because Caitlin has achieved so much, you feel like that's the only thing. Ooh, if that's the case, then you have to take those, you know, filters off of your timeline and see the truth. You have to, let me check notes, take the filter off of your timeline so you can see what's really important in the WNBA. It doesn't really matter what you think. It doesn't really matter what you're interested in. You need to take the filters off of your timeline and see these other storylines because they are so much more important than Caitlin Clark. She packed a whole lot into that. Right. Goodness. The woman you just heard from is Shanae Agumake, and I hope I got her name correct. I'll put it down here in terms of how it's spelled, but it's a very tough name to say. Shanae Agumake. She is a much heralded, award winning WNBA player that I bet, other than a few of you who are ardent WNBA fans, 
have never even heard of. She's a celebrity in WNBA circles. She's won all kinds of awards. She hosts a radio show on ESPN. But I almost guarantee that most people watching this video and most fans of Caitlin Clark will have no idea who this woman is. And she also rattled off a bunch of names of other WNBA players and legends who I also believe you'll have no idea who they are. But she was very quick to let everybody know right up front, she isn't giving Caitlin Clark the tiara. And then she went on to say that if you think that Caitlin Clark is the big story, then you, and I quote, need to take the filter off your timeline to see the truth. I'm not sure she understands. Many people aren't interested in those other stories. If they were, they would already know those other stories. Most people I know pick and choose what stories they're interested in. Nobody's forcing them to consume a story that they have no interest in whatsoever. There's no way that Shanae or anybody else in the WNBA is going to force a storyline onto somebody if they're not interested in it. So you can already see the WNBA play is putting their plan in place. They are going to use the hype around Caitlin Clark to boost the existing WNBA players and former WNBA players. How concerned were you about the sport itself when the noise about Caitlin Clark coming out of college entering the Notice that Stephen A. Smith chose, he's, he's very articulate, he's very experienced in his delivery, and he chose to call it noise around Caitlin Clark. The WNBA, what she was going to do, with Cheryl Swoops and others questioning how great or how effective she would ultimately be. I'm not talking about those comments. I'm talking about how it was received by certain portions of the populace. I was wondering whether- What certain portions were those? People who didn't really follow the WNBA, but we're fans of Caitlin Clark, you know, us Rubes. Not you all were concerned as to whether or not that would hurt the game and how it was evolving and elevating in the mind's eyes of folks. Just because people were talking about that story instead of really, really appreciating the fact that some more additional attention was going to be brought to the women's game. What, was your, what were your concerns, if any at all, over that, over that particular incident? You know, it's crazy, Stephen A. You know, I, a lot of people see me put together, but I got a little, I got some hot takes. I got some crazy thoughts. And I actually thought that that situation between uh, Cheryl Swoops and, and Caitlin Clark was good for the game because it had an opportunity for me to say, why can't we normalize our legends having opinions? Now why can't we normalize our legends having opinions? I didn't know that it needed normalization. I thought if you had an opinion, you could, you know, basically state your opinion. Obviously, Cheryl Swoops stated her opinion without facts. She absolutely lied. But I didn't know there was a need to have opinions normalized. Maybe it's something in the WNBA. Now, Cheryl Swoops, of course, was wrong to some degree. But overall, I love us being more interactive and having our legends having a voice because that's the way the game should be. She loves having people out there talking to the legends because that's how the WNBA should be. It shouldn't be about the player coming in, the player with, it, with her own fan base, the player who everyone's excited about. It's about the legends. It's about people who came before you. I mean, I must have seen LeBron James talk at nauseum about Bob Cousy and John Havlicek. I mean, haven't you? Of course you haven't. I haven't heard Seth Curry talk that much about Pete Maravich. You know, the legends, because that's what it's all about. It's not about today's player. LeBron shouldn't worry about what he's doing today. He should be giving homage to the past. That's what the WNBA is looking for. For Caitlin Clark, <laughs> this is going to be really ugly. You're starting to see it already. They're going to expect Caitlin Clark to submit to the WNBA. She is going to have to submit to the WNBA being the star and the legends being the star and her not being the star. It's not about you, Caitlin. Nope, not about you. It's about us. We were here before you. Glorify us. But now you have alliances with brands where brands now have a vested interest in helping you, you know, move forward. A no better example. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> She's got this ass backwards. They don't care about you. They care about whether or not aligning with you exposes them 
to a audience that wants to buy their products and will buy their products. It's not about investing in you, it's about investing in their brand. She obviously has this completely wrong or somebody has told her something completely wrong. There's not a brand out there that comes to the table and says, we wanna make things better for you. No, they wanna move product. Some of them do it very badly, but in any event, their their goal, their sole goal is to move product. All of this and probably Caitlin Clark and State Farm. Her having a relationship with State Farm where she's on commercials, they have a vested interest to get Jake from State Farm at her game. Now, mind you, Travis Scott should adapt up. I don't know if you saw that. Travis yeah. Scott should adapt up Maya Moore first yes. because that is the legend. So Jake from State Farm, you're not there to help sell more insurance policies. You're there to help the WNBA. Didn't you know that? So going out there and talking to, you know, Caitlin Clark, when you should have been talking to these legends who need propping up. They, they're the ones who are more deserving than Caitlin Clark. And then when she talked about Travis Scott, that was really funny. I mean, she's saying that Travis Scott, a rapper, a guy who's selling albums and downloads, should have gone and talked to Maya Moore. Maya Moore, Great player, 35 years old, retired. Caitlin Clark, college student, more in line with his demographic, has an audience that he's trying to reach so that maybe he can sell more albums and downloads. You shouldn't be talking to her. You should be talking to Maya Moore. Forget that she's 35 years old and retired. That's not what the WNBA wants. The WNBA wants that star power focused on the WNBA, not on Caitlin Clark. Now don't get me wrong, Maya Moore was incredible. I watched her when she played at UConn. Many of you guys know I came from Connecticut. I understood she was a phenomenal player, but she's been retired for quite some time. She's 35 years old. A brand, a rapper, they want to align with people who can reach their demographic. She's not in that demographic anymore, but the WNBA and Shanae uh, Ogumike, want to make sure I got her name right, they say, hey, you should be dapping up with Maya Moore, not Caitlin Clark, not the white girl in college. The 35-year-old retiree is who you should have been spending your time with. You see it how nuts this is? I mean, this is really weird. And they already know that Caitlin Clark has much higher star power than anybody in the WNBA today. It's not even close, but they don't want her to be the quote, face of the league. This is gonna be really bad and really interesting to watch. The WNBA wants to cash in on the star power of Caitlin Clark for the league and its other players, not for Caitlin Clark. They want brands and sponsors to embrace the WNBA ahead of that young white girl, Caitlin Clark. Except there's one huge problem. The WNBA can't possibly control that. The fans control their own interest. Fan interest determines who the star is. Fan interest determines who the sponsors and brands want to align with. Like I said, Shanae Agumake, might be a big star in this inner circle of the WNBA and for people who have followed along very closely. But outside of that circle, nobody knows who the hell she is. Caitlin Clark is coming to the WNBA and she already has a huge fan base behind her. So you're probably asking yourself right now, hey Barry, what does any of this have to do with your Martin Luther King lead in? Well, Martin Luther King Jr. eloquently stated almost 60 years ago that he wanted his sons and daughters to be judged by the context of their character, not the color of their skin. The problem with that lovely tenet and admonition is that in this DEI era, there are so many people who don't wanna hear it. And it's looking more and more like the WNBA and some of its players don't want any part of that either. Check this out, it's going to blow your mind. Unbelievably, this is an article that appeared on USA Today. It's going to blow you away, we're gonna go through it. I've highlighted some paragraphs to bring your attention to it, but it's, it's the most racist thing I don't think I've ever seen a major news publication actually put out. The title of it, Women's basketball needs faces of future to be black. Enter Juju Watkins and Hannah Hidalgo. So right off the bat, they're telling you, hey, we're not really interested in anyone's, you know, context of their character, their merit. 
We just want the future faces of the WNBA to be black. That's nuts, but it gets worse. Let's let's continue. With Kaylin Clark headed to the 2024 WNBA draft, where she's projected to be the number one overall pick, Watkins, the nation's second leading scorer this season behind Clark, is positioned to become the face of women's basketball. So they're already determined that she's gonna this other black woman is gonna be the face. She'll be joined by Notre Dame point guard Hannah Hidalgo, the other favorite for freshman of the year. Not lost on any of the power brokers in the game, both of these players are black. And in a game built by black women, it matters that the faces of the future look like the faces of the past. Can you believe they actually put that in an article? Racist article. Over the past few years, as women's basketball has exploded in popularity, I would say college basketball, much of the media and marketing attention has focused on three prominent white players, Clark, UConn junior Paige Beckers, and Oregon Sabrina Ionescu, who graduated in 2020. Too often, the black players who built women's hoops and who now dominate the professional level, where the WNBA 70% black, haven't been acknowledged. Whew, that's a mouthful, and, and she's stepping into it deeply. Uh, I don't think it's anyone's fault or been anyone's intention, Southern Cal coach Lindsey Gottlieb told USA Today Sports, but there haven't been enough commercial endorsements of black female stars in our society, period. So you see what they're saying, they're gonna be trying to force brands to get behind black WNBA players, not because of the context of their character or the merit of what they bring to the brand, but rather because of the color of their skin, which is completely, completely different and uh, uh, opposes the tenet of what Martin Luther King Jr. said. As basketball and women's basketball grows in popularity, white players get the most attention. Consider that power forward Asia Wilson, arguably the best player in the world, whose award resume is longer than a Walgreens receipt, doesn't have near the star power of Caitlin Clark. So, I, I mean, these people are absolutely nuts. They're just making everything completely diametrically different than what Martin Luther King Jr. said. You gotta give them the money cause they're black. Doesn't matter that they they're, it's meritorious, just give them the damn money. One key issue WNBA players say is that the college game is much more accessible than the pros. Clark and Iowa regularly play on Fox as do Beckers and UConn. I wonder why, uh, it's called ratings. That's why they're on TV, it's called ratings. Nobody wants to watch the WNBA. The ratings are in the toilet. So there's a reason why UConn is always on television. There's a reason why Caitlin Clark and Iowa are on television. It's not because of their whiteness. UConn was on TV when Maya Moore was playing. <laughs> it's absolutely insane. At a USA basketball training camp last month, Las Vegas star Kelsey Plum quipped that it would be nice if the WNBA had a better media rights deal so my mom doesn't have to jump through hoops to watch our games on some random streaming platform. Uh, hello? You not understand marketing? The reason why your mom can't find your games and has to go looking all over the place is because there's no market for it. Every single broadcast partner, if there was a market for it, would be broadcasting your games. It's that simple. <laughs> if you had eyeballs, there would be somebody there who would want to broadcast your game because they could sell those eyeballs to an advertiser. During a speech at the 2021 ESPYs, Beckers acknowledged as much, saying, With the light I have now as a white woman who leads a black-led sport, I want to shed a light on black women. They don't get the media coverage that they deserve. They've given so much to the sport, the community and society as a whole, and their value is undeniable. Yeah, they're, no, it's not undeniable. You have to know that if there was a market, if there were eyeballs that wanted to see the WNBA, there would be advertisers that would want to reach that market. It is very simple. It's called uh, supply and demand. In 2022, Plum told ESPN.com, there was no question she was promoted heavily by the league early in her career because she was straight and white. <laughs> the league can be guilty of pushing only what it thinks is marketable, and sometimes a black woman doesn't check off those boxes. They, they, they want to force you to buy into, and, and by her words, black and lesbian women instead of straight 
white women because they deserve it. They've been here. They're the ones who built the WNBA. Pay us. It doesn't work that way. This racist article continues. It's about time black women got recognition, respect they deserve. I don't know who wrote this. Obviously, she's not good with English, but that's not even a real sentence. It doesn't make any sense. So she threw this out there. Obviously, there's been some grammatical errors throughout this entire article that she just had to push out there and say that the WNBA needs to focus on black players and not Caitlin Clark. And to end the article, Check out this line. Black women have paved the way in this game. So many of them have broken down doors for us today. It's about time black women got the recognition they deserve in this sport. You can't force recognition. You can't force monetization. You have to be appealing to the market that the sponsors and brands want. Caitlin Clark has built up a huge following that following is going to continue to follow her in the WNBA, and you can't be mad or use her because of the color of her skin. She didn't have any say in that. It's obvious that brands love her. It's obvious that her fans love her, and you can't blame her for that. If you're not getting the same level of attention and recognition, then maybe it has to do with your merit. Martin Luther King led the civil rights era. Everything he wanted was just for people to have the same opportunity. Nobody has removed your opportunity. Caitlin Clark has a huge fan base. She draws eyeballs on television and accordingly, she gets paid. The context of her character is what these people are paying for. They're not paying money, NIL or otherwise, because she's white. And they're not not paying you because you're black. You can't force people to consume and have interest in the stories that you want them to have interest in. You're just gonna have to elevate your platform. You're gonna have to elevate your marketability and understand that your appeal, black or white, is what's gonna draw bigger brands and bigger sponsorship deals. And it has nothing to do with your skin color. It's all about what you can bring to the table, your marketability when you're talking to a brand. I, I, I gotta tell you, when I see this DEI stuff where people just say, pay me because of who I am, pay me because I deserve it, pay me because I paved the way, pay me because I was one of the legendary founders and, and pioneers in the WNBA. That means you're asking for a handout. That means you're just asking for someone to pay you because of what you did years ago. That's not how it works. And it's definitely not what Martin Luther King Jr. talked about, prayed about, and died over. He wanted people to be judged on the context of their character, not the color of their skin. Something has gone way wrong in the black community and we gotta fix that. Let me know what you think. <laughs>